We will get a new UFO hearing this month, September, according to Senator Kirsten Gillibrand of New York. Matt Laszlo of Askapol.com broke this story. I will play a snippet from his talk with Senator Gillibrand, and then we'll go deep into the implications of this upcoming hearing happening this month. After being told the hearing would be in September, he asked Senator Gillibrand why this hearing is a priority. This is what she had to say. It's a priority for me because I think it's very important that we continue to make things publicly available. Um, give a progress report on how many unidentified aerial phenomena we've assessed and analyzed, give examples of what we have identified, and give examples of what we haven't identified so that the community can be kept up to speed about what we're actually doing and what this office is doing. We also want to try to continue to build credibility within this office so more of the public can feed in sightings and have a place and a platform to send information and inquiries because that's eventually what this office is supposed to do. Later. She said that she hopes the new head of Aero will be the one to testify. The new head is Dr. John T. Koslowski, who is appointed on August 26, 2024. We'll cover him more in a bit. Now to be fair, Senator Gillibrand said that she hopes the new head will be the one to testify. So as far as I understand, this won't be a hearing like the July 26th hearing with the Committee on Oversight and Accountability that had witnesses David Grush, Dave Fravor, and Ryan Graves. And if you want to get really pessimistic, here is what Mike Honcho had to say about this upcoming hearing. Sadly, the Senate Intel Committee's last two UAP hearings were, for lack of a better word, useless and gave the propagandists a platform to sling their lies and BS. I expect more of the same and await the House Oversight Committee's next hearing. I hope I'm proven wrong. I think this hearing could be a big deal though. For starters, there are indications that the new head won't be like Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, who I don't think really wanted to be transparent with the public on UFOs. Stephen Greenstreet reported that during a speech at PhenomiCon, Jay Stratton, who was formerly, formerly a senior figure in the UAP task force and worked along David Grush, made the following statement. The good news is I got a text a few weeks ago from a good friend of mine who was part of the UAP task force, John Koslowski. And he said, I just got the job, the arrow job. He's good, he's trustworthy. And hopefully he can carry on my legacy Jay Stratton, speech at Phenomicon, September 5, 2024. On August 28th on the show Reality Check, Ross Colthart had this to say about the new director of Aero. And I have to say, Dr. John Kozlowski is extremely well spoken of by people I respect and admire in the UAP field. People say he's very, very genuine about bringing a new approach to Arrow, not that he's hypercritical of his predecessors, but that he does want to try and restore public confidence in Arrow after, frankly, what has been months of turmoil. He later stated, Kozlowski is very well spoken of by people who want change and want a greater degree of transparency and openness by the Pentagon. And frankly, whilst I'm not a huge fan of Arrow, and I've been very critical of Arrow. I think this is potentially a very positive move, and uh, it's going to, I think, be incumbent on all of us to give Dr. Kozlowski a chance. Let's show him good faith, and let's see how he moves. By the way, I agree with Ross Coulthart. We owe Dr. Kozlowski a chance. When Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick was inducted as the head of Arrow, I was firm in my stance to give him a chance. Unfortunately, he ended up being a huge disappointment. When Lou Elizondo was asked about Kirkpatrick when he was becoming the head, Lou himself wanted to give him a chance, but didn't seem enthusiastic at all about what he'd bring to the table. That is where Dr. Koslowski is very different. Trusted sources are giving the impression that he's much better in trust and transparency on the UFO issue versus Kirkpatrick. 
I want to set you up for a clip. You may remember that Matthew Pines was on the What Bitcoin Did channel back on July 27th. And in the end, in the, in the final segment of that interview, he spoke about things he's heard from trustworthy sources. He said that two documentaries are coming out this year with people nobody has heard of yet. And when he says people that nobody has heard of, he's not referencing people like David Grush, Lou Elizondo, or Rear Admiral Timothy Gallaudet. He's referencing people that nobody has heard of yet. So not the quote unquote usual suspects. He said that these people that nobody has heard of yet are going to make pretty eye-opening claims and they will have the credentials to back those claims up. And what those claims will be is basically backing up David Grush's allegations. He says more senior people are going to come out. And that and I get the impression it's that people we haven't heard of are going to be in these upcoming documentaries. Senior people are going to come out beyond those documentaries. And then he talks about the coup de grace. And I'm going to play the clip of where he talks about that. But then that's going to trigger these documentaries, other people. And then um, I believe the, the coup de grace will be coming sometime this year uh, with, a, with someone that everyone would recognize if they watch, you know, if they paid attention to the news, you would know this person. So the new head of Arrow, Dr. John Koslowski, and Arrow itself, they must know what's coming out. There's no way that they're oblivious to it. And those two documentaries, by the way, I would assume, is James Fox's documentary, The Program, and the documentary that Lou Elizondo is going to be in, produced by Dan Farah. And so those documentaries are going to have people nobody's heard of that are going to make eye-opening claims. Other officials outside of those documentaries from the government are going to come out, also backing David Grush. And then you have the coup de grace, where someone really, really significant, who, who we would all recognize, who's been in the news, is also going to back up David Grush's allegations. You know, um, a legacy program that is engaged in retrieval of non-human craft as well as bodies. And and I'm sure there's there's other programs too, of course. Those might get discussed as well. I don't know. But the point is that there is no way that Arrow doesn't know this is going to happen. No way. And so maybe, just maybe, trying to be optimistic... That's why they chose Dr. John T. Koslowski, because they, they realize maybe there's some higher ups in the Pentagon, and this is just me trying to be optimistic, realize like we can't continue the Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick path. It's, it will become outlandishly absurd in the face of the people that are going to come forward before the year even ends, backing up David Grush's allegations. So I'm gonna share with you a tweet the reason I like to share people's opinions from Twitter is because I like to get I like to share with you what some people are assessing about the situation to get a temperature, if you will, of, of people's perceptions of what's going on. So Sawan wrote, what I expect from the Arrow round two UAP hearing with Gillibrand under John Koslowski, I heard good things about him from various sources. Maybe a soft admission that there is weight to legacy UAP programs. New video of UAP. Okay, that's very optimistic. I, I, I you know, I, I have no expectations with Dr. Koslowski. Um, I'm going to give him a chance. But it really is a good sign that people that have been involved in the UFO issue inside the government are saying good things about Koslowski when I haven't heard anyone say good things about Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick. And that's noteworthy. So it, do, it, do, I, I, it does appear to me, based upon everything I heard, that the remainder of 2024 is going to be pretty big. And it's, it's it, this whole process that began 
on December 16th, 2017, or if you want to go further back, October 11th, 2017, when To The Stars Academy had the press conference, it doesn't appear to me, based upon all of the intelligence that's circulating, that this is going to implode or do a U-turn or that we're going to return to pre-December 16th, 2017, New York Times UFO levels in terms of how the media and the scientific community have been um, giving credence to, to the UFO issue. Not that the majority of the scientific community has been giving credence to it, but more than ever before, and the mainstream media more than ever before has been treating this issue differently. I think this is going to be absolutely permanent. Um, not because people are just going to be in some kind of mind virus that never goes away, but because the evidence and the officialdom and the backing up of what has already taken place is only going to increase in credibility. It's, it's not going to be challenged to an extent where it goes away. So I think we have a lot of things to look forward to. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but, um, everything I hear is that there's a lot of things to look forward to the documentaries as Matthew Pine said, or I interpreted, interpreted, he said beyond the documentaries, more people are going to come forward and then you have the coup de grace. So we'll see what happens. I really look forward to seeing how Dr. John T. Koslowski handles uh, being the point man for Aero. I really look forward to that. And maybe he'll make us proud, frankly. Wouldn't that be amazing? Please do not forget to subscribe. If you'd like to support this channel, you can check out my merch shop where I sell teachers. You could become a patron. You could become a YouTube member. You could give me a one-time donation. All those potentialities can be accessed in the description box below, or you can just slap a like on this bad boy, and I will appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Special thanks to all patrons, YouTube members, those that have bought merch, those that have given me a one-time donation. I couldn't do without you. Thank you so much. See you in the next episode.